In this video, we're reflecting over the Swedish Barista Championship of 2022. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about barista competitions because I just won the Swedish Barista Championships, which means or it qualifies me to compete in the World Barista Championship in Melbourne, Australia after the summer. So what we want to do here is just share a little bit of insight in my process for that competition and kind of open up the opportunity for us doing a little bit of videos along the kind of road to Melbourne. So with that, we obviously also want to talk more about espresso, which is something that we don't talk so much about at this channel, uh, but something that is obviously really important. We drink a lot of espresso. So in this video, we're going to kind of say or talk about what did Patrick do for this competition? How did it play out? And then again, open up for more episodes in the future where we go in a little bit more in detail on, on different stuff. So uh, first of all, competition coffee, kind of important. I worked with a Sudan Rome varietal from the Las Margaritas farm in uh, Colombia. Very interesting coffee, very good coffee. Uh, the challenge for us with that coffee was that it arrived literally two days before the competition. It was one of those classic kind of competition moments where I signed up to compete about a month ago and I had a com competition coffee in mind that was supposed to come in the very beginning of April. And what happened is that it got stuck in customs and just kind of disappeared. We didn't know where it was. So I tried a few other coffees along the road and couldn't really find a coffee I, I liked. And then eventually that coffee arrived on, I think it was Wednesday night. We roasted it for the first time on the first day. I tried it for the first time on the Friday and competed on the Saturday basically, right? So it meant that we had to be a little bit creative, which is one of those things that you have to consider when you compete. Taste is the most important aspect. I could have brought an other coffee that we had here at April if I thought that that was kind of on the level I was looking for competition wise, but rather than kind of freaking out and go with a coffee I wasn't sure taste wise about, we kind of wanted to push with the coffee that was secure in taste, but we didn't have to build a presentation and so on fairly close to the competition. Now, a big help in that was Ikawa. Uh, and Ikawa is kind of continues to be a good help for me when it comes to competitions. And it was kind of interesting because I haven't been roasting much espresso on Ikawa's before. It just hasn't really been a thing. But it's something I've been thinking about, especially since we got the larger model that then allows us to roast a little bit more coffee per batch. So we started to profile uh, basically the espresso on the Ikawa two days before uh, to figure out what do we think is the tastiest, right? And it's such an easy format to roast in, so it's quite easy for us to just kind of roast and go for it, right? Uh, we ended up with a profile, we took that profile, on Friday we dialed in some recipes and on Saturday was competition time, right? So pretty straightforward, um, but an interesting process. Naturally, we usually spend a lot more time with the coffees. When I've been competing in the past, it's, it's months and months with roasting and profiling that same coffee. Now it was a little bit of a different process. Now, for those of you that don't know, the competition is divided into, let's say, three different servers or servings. You have espresso, you have milk beverage, and you have signature beverage. All of these are, are a little bit complicated to go into detail to, and we will in future videos. Uh, let's just say that you have to serve four, four of each to four judges, have to explain the flavors, the taste experience in general, um, and it obviously has to come out being tasty, uh, which is one of the biggest challenges. When it comes to the competition, for me, what I think is always a challenge is you're working with equipment that you're not used to working with, right? And that translates into espresso machine, right? So we had an espresso machine that I'm not currently using every single day, for example, right? Grinder, we have a grinder that I'm not currently using as well and a system that we're not necessarily used in brewing with. And I think the biggest evidence of that or what is the most challenge is the pressure. Because here at April in the store, we don't brew any espresso on nine bar. That's a little bit of an old school way to do things. Not saying you can't make tasty coffee, but when you start playing around with different pressures or profiles or just as we do a fixed bar at a different level, you realize very quickly that those kind of nine bars has a huge impact on just a general taste experience of espresso. So it basically boxes in your ability to get a certain taste profile 
out of your coffee. And that is actually a lot more narrow than what maybe you want to in terms of taste preference, right? So here we're down close to between five to seven bars of it, depending on the coffee when we brew. And the viscosity, the tactility, the mouthfeel, the flavor kind of composition in the espresso differs so much just simply by changing pressure. So that's one of the absolute biggest obstacles when you go out competing, right? Obviously, also the fact that it's espresso. I have tremendous respect for how difficult espresso is as a beverage. It's by far, in my opinion, the most difficult coffee to make. Definitely, especially in a coffee shop, for example, right? But when you compete, for example, in a Brewer's Cup competition, where you can choose all the equipment, you have all the control, then when you go up and do open service, there's no reason why that shouldn't be really tasty because it's really up to you when you have all those variables. But then you do espresso, which is a notoriously difficult way to brew it, you know, in general, in terms of brew methods. And then you do that on a machine you're not used to, workflow you're not used to in front of a bunch of people. It gets a little bit challenging, but it's a lot of fun and there's a lot to learn there, right? So overall, I had a very enjoyable experience. Um, the best part of it is always kind of see the coffee community come together. That's so important, right? And we're at a time now in coffee competitions around the world where unfortunately we get less and less people signing up, uh, which is a really big hindrance for the kind of future of the industry. We need more people to compete. We need to raise that bar of quality. And therefore we just, you know, we need more people competing. So that's something we're gonna look into at this channel as well in the future. How can we introduce more people to it? How can we kind of breach the gap and make that a little bit more accessible, right? Um, now, I want to just finish up this video by talking a little bit more in detail about the espresso here, right? Because the espresso is the main feature in this competition, even though, again, it's served in maybe in three different format. You can basically choose whatever coffee you want. You can have three different coffees if you want to. I had one single coffee because I enjoy the, the storytelling that, that comes with that and the opportunity of kind of really presenting that coffee really well. But there's you know, no harm in doing three coffees if you want to, or two coffees, or blending, or whatever you want. That's a, a subject for another matter, right? Uh, now, one of the things that I thought about being, or given the fact that we're doing a different pressure here in the competition, so classic nine bar pressure, is dose-wise, for example. Uh, what I did, I went up in dose from a normal pressure. So I dosed basically the basket size um, in terms of the amount of grounds of coffee I used. Volume I pushed out was a little bit shorter than what I'm used to. Uh, we did a 19 to 50 ratio. And that's for me is a little bit compact. It makes it a bit sweeter. Um, highlights certain aspects of the espresso, especially in that format. And um, it's really interesting how you kind of have to rethink this whole process. One of the things I kind of stuck with was to brew fast. So we're still pushing shots about 20 to 24 seconds, pretty much, uh, enabled to get that kind of structure to it, right? Um, it's simple stuff as in, in the competition, you're evaluated actually one point based on crema, you know, um, and should crema really be on espresso? I think that's an interesting discussion, right? Um, however, it's been a really interesting process and we're looking forward to, I'm looking forward to sharing more about this along my journey. And we're very happy to take this opportunity to just answer any questions you might, ha might have about barista competitions, right? Because I'm sure you have a bunch of them. Um, and in the end of the day, it's it's so much fun and it's such an interesting process that I really think that anyone working with coffee should be part of these competitions. It makes a lot of sense. Um, and regardless of result in the competition, it's going to make you better. Step one, right? There's a lot of people not competing because they feel that you know they're insecure in certain things, so they get nervous on stage. And I historically have had some really horrible barista cup presentations um, in very early in my career that you know instead of letting that um instead of letting that put me in a situation where i didn't want to compete i made sure to take that and make that into something positive right and now here i am i'm competing in a world championship i'm kind of excited this is going to be fun um this is not something that i'm not taking seriously this is going to be you know i'm going in there to to try to do my best and, and see how far that will take me right um, but yeah, that's about it for this video today. Again, just a little bit of an introduction to, you know, we won a championship, we're going to be competing, we're going to talk a lot more about espresso, and we just want to open up that conversation for anyone that has any questions on it, right? And as usual, we always take this conversation over to Patreon for a little bit more in-depth conversations. 
Uh, so if, if you're a competitor, if that's something you you're want to do this season, for example, sign up and we can have a little bit more um, in-depth conversations about anything competition related, really, right? Uh, so with that, I want to thank you for, um, for watching. I want to thank everyone in the Swedish SAA chapter, all the volunteers, everyone at the event, all the other competitors, amazing people um, for just coming together and making sure that this event would happen. It's so important that we as a coffee community help each other in these situations because competitions is something that every nation would benefit from having, right? And we're at a point now where competitions are getting more and more difficult to organize um, and actually do something with. And I think it's very important that as a coffee community, we come in, we support SEA in the competitions. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, competition has been my platform for doing stuff for a very long time and will continue to be so. So, you know, let's just compete more in coffee. With that, uh, I want to say thank you for watching and have a great day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.